All right, what is going on guys? So in this video, I'm gonna be reacting to my old diet from 10 years ago. So the other day I was cleaning out this old filing cabinet over here and I discovered this notebook. So this contains my first ever bodybuilding diets. The one I wanna go through is this one from 2010, exactly a decade ago. I'll just put a posing clip up here of what I looked like when I was preparing for this show. And I'll put a little side by side from my latest posing update from just about a week ago for comparison's sake. Um, so I will say, I think I look pretty good here in 2010, but just because a diet it worked doesn't mean it's the most effective or efficient way to go about getting lean or getting muscular. Maybe I could have gotten even better results if I had set this diet up a better way, or maybe I could have gotten the same results without having to suffer quite as much. And I think after I go through everything in detail, I'll do a final diet rating out of 10, so you guys can stay tuned for that. All right, so other than the Comic Sans MS font, I'd say the first thing we'll notice here is that this is, in fact, a meal plan. I would eat exactly these meals at exactly these times every day with no exceptions. It's interesting because back Back then I actually didn't even know or care what the macros or the calories were. I thought that there was something special about these foods eaten at these times that would get me shredded. Whereas now I think if I was to redo a contest prep diet, the first thing I would do is figure out what the calories and the macros are. Um, but I was curious. So I did before recording here, just tally up the macros of this diet. So I'll put them up here on the screen for you guys. Now what stands out to me with these macros first is just how high the protein is. Eating 265 grams of protein is just overkill to say the least. And the fats here are particularly concerning. Only 13% of calories are coming from fats. I like to set fats at a minimum of at least 15 to 20% of total calories. And the reason for that is lower fat intakes have been associated with reductions in testosterone, which is obviously not good for overall health, but also not good for retaining muscle. Generally, I'm somewhere in the like 40 to 60 gram range on a contest prep diet. As for the carbs and calories, I would say the carbs Carbs could be a little bit higher, but this might just be a necessary evil of getting shredded. That isn't something I'd broadly recommend, but if you wanna get shredded, that might just be something that you have to do. And I would say the goal when setting up your calories is to keep them as high as you can while still losing at the appropriate rate. So you wanna be losing about 1% of body weight per week while keeping calories as high as possible. But like I said, at a certain point, you're just gonna have to increase that deficit as your metabolism adapts. All right, so I already mentioned that this is in fact a meal plan, meaning it's not a flexible dieting setup, but I do think that this diet would be strengthened just by adding a bit of flexibility. So for example, if I wanted to sub out you know, the oatmeal in meal one, I could easily replace that with a slice of toast and that wouldn't affect my progress in any way. And adding flexibility like this to the diet is gonna help in two ways. First of all, it's gonna make the diet more enjoyable. You're not being confined to only these foods as long as the diet lasts. And secondly, I think it's better from a nutritional perspective because you're less likely to run into nutrient deficiencies if you have a variety of foods that you're swapping in and out from day to day. And I would say overall, the main thing that I find with meal plans is that people tend to only stick to the diet as long as they can stick to the meal plan. So unless you plan on staying on the meal plan forever, what are you gonna do once you come off it? And so I would say to start by calculating the macros, calculating the calories, so then you know how to adjust your nutrition once the, the diet is over. All right, so let's quickly go through this meal by meal. So the first meal here, you'll see eaten at 7 a.m. after 30 minutes of cardio on an empty stomach. So at the time I wrote this meal plan, I obviously thought there was something special about fasted cardio when it comes to fat loss. I don't think that's true anymore. Research shows that even though you do burn more fat when doing cardio fasted, whatever substrate you burn more of during the cardio session itself, you'll burn less of over the next 24 hours. And the latest systematic review that we have on this has pretty much written this off as a myth. So I think you should just do cardio whenever it best fits your schedule or when you feel like you have the best energy. And if that happens to be first thing in the morning on an empty stomach, then that's totally fine, but there's nothing particularly special about doing it at this time of day. All right, so overall, there's a pretty standard bodybuilding breakfast. You've got egg whites, oatmeal, and I would probably get rid of the whey protein powder. That's a bit more protein overkill there. And I would probably replace that with a piece of fruit, like a banana or an apple or something. The whole flax seeds here, I find this really interesting because I totally forgot that I used to do this, but I used to take a tablespoon of whole flax seeds and just pound that back with my protein shake. Um, but I think I used to think that there was something special about flax seeds, that they had this unique fat burning power or whatever. That's definitely not true, but I also can't hate on flax seeds because they are extremely nutritious. They're a great source of omega-3s, high in fiber, just an overall nutritious food. However, the thing is, if you're eating whole flax seeds, the shell that surrounds the seed itself isn't easily digested. 
So if you're gonna eat them whole, you wanna make sure that you're really grinding the seed down or you can just buy them ground to begin with. Now, if I'm being honest, I would probably replace these flax seeds with a different fat source at this point. Um, so I could replace it with like, say a whole egg or some avocado, even some nuts or a nut butter or something like that. You know, you could leave the flax seeds in once or twice a week, but you could easily rotate those food sources in and out. Okay, so the next meal here, we've got a scoop of whey protein and 100 grams of broccoli. Really, Jeff? Broccoli and whey protein. What's wrong with that? So 10 a.m. was when my lecture would start. I was in university at the time. I was so stubborn that I wouldn't eat this meal at like 9.57. It would have to be exactly at 10 a.m. So the professor would get up and start lecturing. I would take out the protein shake, shake that up, glug, 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 glug. And then I would start chomping down on the raw broccoli. In retrospect, I think there's nothing necessarily wrong with this meal. It just doesn't need to be eaten at exactly that time. I would probably replace the broccoli with like a low calorie fruit, something like a peach, a plum, or a pear, or even a kiwi, just make the meal more enjoyable. And you could add some nuts or something like some salted almonds to this meal to make it a little bit more well-rounded. Okay, so after that, we've got two meals of pretty much just chicken and broccoli. Uh, there's some fish oil in there. I think I'm gonna save the supplement stuff for another video. So I have my full supplements sheet here as well. It's a doozy, so <laughs> if you guys would like to see me cover that, I can do that. I've got nothing against the fish oil caps. I think they fit in there decently well. The main issue I have with this is the pre-workout meal. Other than the fibrous carbs from the broccoli, there's no carb source here that can be used to fuel training. I think this is the biggest violation so far, other than the Comic Sans font. This is the worst part of the diet so far. If you look, you'll see in meal five, I've got 180 grams of sweet potato. So what I would do is just take that sweet potato and either cut it in half and put equal amounts of carbs in the pre and post-workout meals, or just take all of it and lump it in the pre-workout meal. Because in my opinion, the pre-workout meal is the most important meal of the day because ultimately training is what's gonna get the anabolic machinery going and help you preserve or build muscle while dieting. And the fact that I only ate chicken and broccoli just isn't a good choice. And also I would probably just get rid of that broccoli altogether because that can give you kind of bloating or gas or just general discomfort during training, which is not ideal for performance either. And there's no need to have a fibrous vegetable like that before training. All right, so after that, it looks like I would have a scoop of whey protein again. Now, I think this is totally redundant. The best evidence that we have on peri-workout nutrition says that the anabolic window around training is probably about four to five hours in length. So if I ate my pre-workout meal at 5 p.m. and then I've got my next whole food meal scheduled for 7.30, the amino acids from the pre-workout meal, from the chicken breast, are still gonna be in my bloodstream. So to throw some more amino acids at the bloodstream right after the workout is pretty futile. I would say to just wait until that post-workout whole food meal and that'll have all the bases covered when it comes to post-workout nutrition. So when it comes to that post-workout meal, this is probably my favorite meal of the day. I think this is a good, well-rounded meal. I like the two cups of mixed veggies, so it's not just broccoli. I've got some peppers. I used to have some yellow peppers, red peppers and green peppers, onions and mushrooms. And then the tilapia is a fine choice. It's a very lean fish. It's interesting because at the time, Everyone thought tilapia was like a special bodybuilding food. Like it somehow had these properties that would allow it to really thin out your skin or really dry you out. That's just bodybuilding folklore. There's no truth to that. Um, so you could easily replace that tilapia with any other fish or really any protein source for that matter. I would probably replace it with salmon just because I think the healthy fats from the salmon would kind of negate the supplementation of fish oils. You wouldn't have to eat that every day, but it is a more appetizing fish in my opinion as well. Okay, and then the last meal I also quite like. So I like the casein protein powder. I think a slow digesting protein source before going to bed is a good idea. I would probably replace it with cottage cheese just because the cottage cheese is gonna have more naturally occurring nutrients and will probably be more satiating because you actually get to eat it with a spoon. And I like cottage cheese, so it's more appetizing than just pounding back another shake. I don't know if I would include the tuna here. I hate tuna. I probably thought it was a special food <laughs> back then. I probably would take some carbs from breakfast and put them in the pre-bed meal just because I find I can sleep better at night if I have some carbs in the pre-bed meal. And there's no reason not to have carbs before you go to bed. I used to think that if I ate carbs before bed, they'd just be instantly stored as fat, but that's a complete myth. I did another whole video on that if you'd like to check it out. Overall, I would say I would give this diet a light to 
decent four out of 10. I do think it got some things right. So it gets points for including a lot of vegetables. It's got enough protein. It's got too much protein, but I think it's better to have at least a sufficient intake than an insufficient intake. So we'll give it like half a point for that. I also like the fact that it's not criminally low on carbs or calories. I've seen a lot worse on contest prep diets um, and it doesn't completely cut carbs, which a lot of contest prep diets do. Um, so I get some points for those things, but it also loses some points. So it loses a couple points for not being nearly flexible enough. So it's too rigid when it comes to the actual food choices and the timing of those foods. I think it's way too low on fat. I'd add at least another 10 to 15 grams of fat per day. Uh, I really am not a fan of the suboptimal pre-workout nutrition with no carbs and the broccoli there. Not so much a fan of the fasted cardio. It's not really a bad thing. It's just, again, not necessary. I definitely like to see some more fruit. So there's no fruit in this diet, probably because I thought sugar would be instantly stored as fat, but that's definitely not true. And I'd like to see more variety in general. So I'd like to see some beans, some legumes, some nuts, and maybe some other grains like some breads or cereals or what have you. I think that would just make the diet much more nutritionally complete. And I think I'm going to leave it at that for this one. Um, if you guys would like to see my thoughts on all my supplements list, I'll put it up here. Uh, just comment down below and let me know if there's enough people interested. I'll do another video like this on that. Um, also, I'll put a button over here to my ultimate guide to body recomposition that lays out my full stance on nutrition, calculating macros, supplements, sleep, everything in there is covered in so much more detail than what I've ever done on the channel. So if you'd like to check that out, hit up the button over here. I'll also link it down below. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys all here in the next one. Hmm. Genius. Genius. Tilapia? This is perfect. This is great. <laughs> What's wrong with that?